This is the iPad Mini 7, and today I want to share with you how I use this as more than just a consumption device. Now, don't get me wrong. It's a really nice consumption device, but you don't have to pay upwards of $1,000 for the iPad Mini 7 if all you're going to use it for is a consumption device. Today, I want to share with you how I not only turned this into a productivity beast for me, but I also turned it into my second brain. Let's take a look. This is my iPad mini 7 home screen. And what you'll notice really quickly is it's very, very simple. As you can see, there's nothing else on this page. There's no hidden icons or anything like that. And if you look right here, you can see these down here are the apps that I use all the time. No matter what area I scroll to, I want to have access to these apps right here. And if you look right here, you can see I only have two pages. Now, really quickly, because if you watch some of my older you know, shortcut videos or what's on my iPhone, I had a very, very complex way of doing this. But what I found out over the years of doing this, simplicity works better every single time because with simplicity, we're more likely to stick to it. But more importantly, I don't have to worry about or guess where things are. I naturally know where they are because instead of having things buried inside of menus, I have everything either one or two clicks away. So let me show you my main page. Okay, so right here, you can see that I'm using Structured. Structured is a really cool app, especially if you're into productivity. It allows you to plan out your day the night before. It's kind of like a day planner, but it's digital and it's way cooler. All right. And then right here, we have ChatGPT and Perplexity. Now, in my experience, ChatGPT has been better than Perplexity. I don't know if it's because with ChatGPT, you can customize it and tell it exactly what you want and how you want it to answer, or if perplexity just not there yet. I'm not sure. But for me, I picked up perplexity because I wanted to fact check ChatGPT. But it seems like ChatGPT give more correct answers than perplexity. So I'm still using them both. And this mainly comes to me learning how to code and things like that. But so far, so well, when I'm using them, I default to ChatGPT because I find that it works better for me, at least when it comes to coding and things like that. Right here is where all the magic happens, this window right here. So if you look right here, you can see that I have these two entry points are, these two shortcuts are for Notion database. One of them is my active pipeline, which right here, active pipeline, and right here is going to be my master pipeline. Over here is where I create my mind maps that I'm going to use for videos. And then down here are my workflows. These workflows allow me to push one button. My iPad do a lot of cool stuff. And then I can start doing research or whatever the case may be. Now, down here are, this is a bookmark. This allows me to bookmark things into Notion. And then these three is basically documentation. So this is documentation, documentation. And my library actually opens up my Kindle app. Now, we're going to come back and I'm going to maybe try Let's Work. The only downside to this is it's going to start my Get Into The Flow music playlist. So I might have to pause the audio or some figure out some way to mute the audio. Because when it first comes on, it's definitely going to start playing music. And I don't want to get a copyright strike, especially not for something that's not intentional, me playing music. All right. So before we do that, I'm going to show you this one right here. Now, you can see right here, I have topic research. This is for if I got a new book. All of these right here are going into Obsidian. So all orange goes into Obsidian. All blue goes into OmniFocus. Now, the way I took a course and it talked about basically how to structure your OmniFocus or structure your task. So I got my set up a little bit different. I basically got them set up in rows versus, you know, categories, if you will. So let me show you what I mean. If I click on, let's say, lifestyle. So lifestyle, I have all the different things that I want to improve. So health, my bucket list, someday, and then relationship building. All right. So basically health and relationship building in my bucket list. All of that's lifestyle. And I put someday up in here because I might have something that I want to do someday. I found that that goes best right there for me. So if we look right here, we test out this one. You can see the inbox and you can see it goes to quick capture. So you can see I have a few menus that pop up, but they're they're only one step removed. Down here, all of these are direct to that specific shortcut. So if it's a button I'm pushing, then it's because 
that's what I want to capture, which is that specific new book that I'm reading. And I want to start doing notes on it and things like that. Now, if we go back up here, you can see that I have three windows only. This window doesn't have anything because I wanted to give myself three windows. And I'm not trying to fill them up, but I just wanted to limit myself to three windows. Now, from my understanding, there's no limit to how many windows you can use, but I find that if I have to go up once, or if I'm right here in the middle, I go up once either way and I get to what I want and I'm only one step removed. So that's the reason why I have it like that. That's the reason why I like it. But if we click right here on let's work, you'll see what's going to happen. Okay, so I'm assuming my music didn't start playing because I'm recording, which is awesome. But you can see it opens up to my 2025 goals and my vision board. Basically, that's like, a, you know, getting into flow type deal, making sure that I'm getting mentally pumped up to do the work ahead of me. After that, once we're done with that, you can see that now I have OmniFocus open on one side and I have my structure app open on the other and the reason why is you see i got free time coming up so but the reason why is because i can grab let's say surface pro review i can grab this and once i grab it it's not letting me grab it with the mouse but once i grab it i can actually bring it over here and i can actually drop this and come up in here click up in it i can say edit and then I can come up in here and do whatever I want to do to it, change up the time, all that good stuff. And it works out really, really well. So that's the reason why I set these up so I can see exactly what I need to be focused on and see what I need to do. So we're going to close those two out. And I'm assuming my music app didn't open because of, yeah, you see, it was actually playing. It just I just didn't hear the audio because I'm recording. So close that out. And if we open up this shortcut really quickly, I'll show you how I'm doing that. So basically all the shortcuts that I want, so I just put them inside of, you can see this is my productivity folder. So I have Linux coding, productivity, and I also have second brain, which is what you just seen. I have a lot more in my second brain. However, this stuff down here, I don't really use, but I leave it up in this folder just in case I need it again. Only the top 12 is going to show. So I leave the ones at the top that I want to see. But if we come back over here to, let's see, where is it? Productivity. i show you the one I just ran. You can see it's really simple. It starts a timer. You can see right here it starts a timer, and then it goes from there. So start a 25-minute timer, B96, OmniFocus, and open up my goals. Now, on the other one, which I thought I did it on here, I'm going to say open. And basically what it's going to do is it's going to, I'm going to click open, and then I'm going to just say clock. The reason for this, as you'll quickly see, is when you're looking at this, it makes a lot of sense for you to open up your clock. Only difference is you're going to have it in a slide overview. Now, I did that with hook research tech all that other stuff so let's click on one of them just so i can show you what will happen so hook research is going to run through it you can see it's opening up the timer and now i can slide the timer to the side and i can start my research the reason why this is so prevalent is because this allows me to make sure that i'm able to get my work done and feel like I have to, you know, I have some urgency about it. And if you look back at the timer, what you'll notice is if I come up in here, you can see cancel current timers on all of them. So each, no matter what time I run, it's always going to cancel a timer and you can see how easy it is to do that. So these are simple shortcuts, but they're exactly what I need. So now I can come over here, I can say cancel, and I can close that out. Easy peasy. Now, down here, what we're going to have is, so right here is blank. I didn't put anything over there because, honestly, I didn't have anything to put over there. So right here, this is OmniFocus. If I click, I'm sorry, this is Notion. If I click on it, it's going to take me directly to my 
dashboard where I'm able to jump into whatever I want to jump into. If I don't want my dashboard, but let's say I want my content pipeline, this is going to take me to my active content pipeline. And you can see this is the content pipeline. And over here, I have different videos going through different phases. And as you can see, I have different channels and things like that. So if I close this back out, I can actually close out all that. And then if I flip through it, you can see this is the master content pipeline. This is where all my ideas go when I'm not sure if I want to do it, but it's an ideal on my mind. So I can come over here. I can place it here. And then if I like it, I'm able to come up in here, change it around and add it to the content pipe to the active content pipeline. So that's how this works right here. Pretty, pretty cool stuff right here is a quick cap this basically opens up excel to the latest keyword research thing i did and then you can see well i can show you this because this has nothing to do with this specific channel this is for another channel this is for my marketing channel so you can see right here i'm able to i have keyword this is my keyword research this is everything i need and then over here is the content idea for that specific keyword and because i'm asking a lot of answering a lot of questions it's really really easy to do and the best part about it is i got a ton of them so i just pull out sets of hundreds and that's how i do it easy peasy ton of work though then you can see over here if i click right here that's just going to jump me straight to youtube and to search so i can search for whatever it is i'm looking for this right here opens me up into notability so if i have something i want to write then i could do it here and that's basically what this is so i'm just going to delete that note because i don't need it i'm gonna say okay then i can close that out and then over here is just basically a, i'm not sure if you're familiar with the para technique but we got our basically projects, archives, areas, and resources. And instead of seeing one of them, we got the inbox up top because I have this folder set up to show my inbox. So if I click on inbox, it's going to show me. But if I take one step back, you can see this is what it is. So projects, areas, resources, archives, and inbox is right here. Easy peasy. And then down here, of course, I have all my different apps that I had from the first one. Now, we come back over here. I keep it like this during free time. The reason why I like this so much, honestly, is because it removes a lot of the, the distraction. Now, if I find that it's an app that I'm using a lot, then I'll create a shortcut for it. Or if I find that it's something that I'm missing, I still have room on my screen to add two more icons or two more shortcuts or two more widgets or two more apps. More importantly, I have this area right here. If we click right here, we're going to say done. It's kind of, I have this area right here where I got four extra slots left on my main slot while my second brain is taken up my productivity which is right here is still available and then i have this whole main window open but this window is going to be used for coding i just haven't started putting things up in there yet but between productivity and playing with tech the nerdy side of tech or coding this is like the main stuff that i would be doing if you notice there are no there's nothing on here about Netflix or anything like that. I do have Netflix. I do have, you know, streaming apps and stuff like that on here, but that's not the primary use for it. And that's the reason why I say if you're just using your iPad as a consumption device, you're really missing out. Like this can be so much more. And I want to show you because I, I, I just want to show you. So let's say. Let's go into Notion, right? And let's say I wanted to, let's say I'm standing in line or I'm sitting down waiting on them to call my name or something. This is literally how I use my iPad. All right. I'll come into Notion. I'll click on Content Pipeline, which is the first one. Okay. It took me into Master Content. Let's go back. Let me just... Click it again. All right. And then I'll say, okay, right now, 
I'm currently researching my second brand on iPad. So let me grab this and see what else I need to do to it. So let's take this back up there. It is very hard doing this with my mouse attached. So let's put this over here for recording. I would click into here. And if you notice right here, I've been doing some of the work already. So if you look right here, I have how I turned the iPad 7 into my second brain. I didn't like that title. So I came up with these two titles. My iPad 7, my iPad Mini 7 is my second brain. How I set my iPad Mini 7 up. Uh, it's supposed to be how I set my iPad Mini 7 up as my second brain. Oh, how I set my how I set up my iPad Mini 7 as my second brain. All right, that's perfect. Then down here, okay, we're gonna close that. I had my hook, but as you can see, I didn't go with this hook because well, it just wasn't working for me. But down here you can see where i write my article so i can come down here write my article i can go look at the links that i talked about inside this video and i can start adding those links and more importantly i'm able to start doing the thumbnail here's the point that i'm making to you while for the editing of this video i need to be at my ipad my bigger ipad or my laptop because this is two video this is two videos if it was one video i would probably try it on here but because it's two and i'm switching between cameras i don't got time to be trying to figure that out with this little ipad i don't think that's what it's for but if you got like a quick video like for on my other channel where my content is really simple and it's not a lot of moving parts i would absolutely try to use this on like an eight or 12 minute video anything longer than that i probably wouldn't try because it, it would be too tedious and it's just wasting way too much time but when it comes to the writing the creation all that stuff this ipad is perfect for that and that's the reason why I enjoy it so much, because I'm able to take this iPad, go sit on the couch or go sit wherever I'm going to sit or go sit in the car or do whatever I'm going to do. When I have downtime throughout my normal day, I like to call it pockets of time. When I have pockets of time, I can easily pull out my iPad, see where this video project is. And by the time I'm finished editing this video, literally the only thing I got to do is take it over to YouTube and upload it. Because all of the mundane technical stuff has been already completed and little pockets of time throughout the day. I'm telling you, this is fantastic. And while I am using a YouTube as an example, you could do this with anything, whatever, anything. It could be, you know, blogging. It could be work. It could be articles. It could be homework. It literally could be whatever you want it to be. The sky is the limit. This is why I say that if you're just using your iPad as a consumption device, you're really missing out. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give me a thumbs up. Remember, I linked up everything below that you need to know in order to be able to create those shortcuts I showed you. With that being said, till next time, I'm Will, and my mission is to simplify tech. Till next time. Later.